The cool morning air in Canada stirred Max from his slumber, causing him to rub his eyes and peer out the window through its broken panes. Every day, 17-year-old man goes through the same routine he makes his bed and heads off to the paper factory to collect his bundle of newspapers. It has become almost like second nature for him now. He had a list of tasks to complete before the town even woke. Having called ready with his everyday jersey and the same old pair of jeans, he stepped out the door. There was no man on the street, just his bicycle waiting for him to accompany it to every doorstep of the listed areas in his delivery list. He didn't have to look at it twice, as he already knew the addresses by heart. The air hit his freshly woken up face, so he pedaled the bicycle to the newspaper office. The bundle was already in the rack where the delivery boys could pick it from. He made his way with a rising sun pedaling his way to each of the big houses. They were nothing like the tiny space he called home, which was just a rental apartment. The shadiest of them all his deceased parents had given him nothing but a friend who did the generosity of letting him live on rent in one of his quarter. Delivering every newspaper in the rack. He had gotten done as the sun stood above his head by 6 a.m. like every other day, only his side job was done. His career of working as a baker in the bakery had the whole day to go. He cycled down to the town square. The little old-style bakery toppings stood in the middle of several other shops opening the door with his keys. He switched the lights on time and earlier than everyone else. Max always was. Good morning, toppings, he said closing the door behind him. The tag of the bakery still showed clothes to the outside, wiping every table, sweeping every tile, and baking the essential first-hour needs. He finally turned the tag to open. In no time, people were marching in with breakfast orders. He slowly watched the seats get filled with young students and middle-aged people going to their offices. Oh, Maxie. What would I do without you? Camilla, the old lady in charge of the reception walked inside it wearing her apron. Max smiled in relief. Now his job was only to handle the baking of things. The smell of freshly baked bread and croissants brought the young boy a different sort of happiness. It was a sweet sense of comfort as if the place was his natural home. Since he started working in this bakery as a young boy, only 15 years old, baking has been his art. The activity that brought him absolute pleasure and peace started as a sweeper, but he learned how to bake from Robert, who generously passed on his skills to Max. His dream was to open a bakery of his own and keep his favorites and the best made bakery delights in his bakery for things from all over the world for his customers' taste buds. He was eager to learn more recipes that people from around the world. It was not only a wish, but a dream for which he worked every day, which motivated him to wake up the earliest and work the hardest. Max took every tip as a saving, consuming, and enjoying very little of what he earned. He rarely had any shopping desires. All that he made went into his savings for the startup of his dream business and necessary expenses every day. Camilla would give him a dollar for working so hard with him other than his. Each of those dollars had been saved and very well kept. In his little bag that he hid in his apartment, he rode his bike back to his corner. It had become nighttime all over the city. Turning the door lock, he pushed the key in the resisting door, allowed no opening motion. A frown appeared on Max's face as Hetry to open it again, but to no avail. A minute later, the doorknob turned and a man appeared inside his apartment. Yes, he questioned Max frowned sternly. What are you doing to my house, sir? Max questioned pushing the door open. He was furious at the man for having trespassed without his permission. Your house, are you the guy that hasn't paid the rent? The tall, bulky man replied, I've paid all rents. Get out of my house, sir. Max replied not falling for anything the man said. He pushed the door further and the man stopped with his single. Mr. Shelby said he wanted to change tenants since you are not paying the rent. Duly, he explained. 
He threw your stuff out and said, I could live here now, so please do not disturb again. The man informed, pointing behind Max and slamming the door in his face, what Max said, turning behind and seeing his things lying under the tree outside his. He quickly went up to his bags, lying on the street opening them. He had only one thing in mind. Where was the bag that had his savings? Oh, no, 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 no. He kept murmuring with tears in his eyes. Every penny of his savings was gone, and the little bag was lying empty. He sat on the street leaning against the tree with his shoulder bag in his hand. Mr. Shelby was a big man. There was no way he could claim anything on. All his thoughts felt blurry in his mind as tears dropped, reflecting his confusion. He did not know who to go to, but there was only one man to question Mr. Shelby walking up to his porch, he knocked on the man's door guilty of his agony. It was pretty late at night, although against his mannerisms, Max found it all right to strike again on the lack of response. If he was to spend the night on the road, it was no problem for someone to have their sleep disturbed for a little while. What is it? Boy, look at the time, will you? The pale white man opened the door tying the knot on his sleeping road. Sir, why did you throw me out? Where am I supposed to go? He pleaded, hoping to receive some mercy from the fat man. I do not. You are paying too less. I've given the place to a man that pays well. He roughly replied without notice. Max held his hands out helplessly. I do what I like with my place. He scorned back. Max knew at that point there was no benefit in arguing with the old man. Where is the money from this bag? He came straight to the question he was concerned with. Uh, don't you worry about that. It's in safe hands. He chuckled. Max could not believe it after all his. He was greedy enough to take the little savings of a poor orphan boy who saved it by eating less, spending less, and surviving on nothing but water and bread. That's my money. Not anymore. It isn't. Now, get out of my porch, will you? Don't come bugging me with any of your questions anymore. Mr. Shelby slammed the door in his face. His eyes had a million questions behind him, and the hands holding his bag were helpless at the situ. He turned around looking for a bench. He could spend his sleepless night on the shivering, cold, welcomed him with open arms of a breeze. The night on the bench did more than one thing for him. It gave him the strength to fight more pain than he ever knew, and more determination for his dreams. Mr. Shelby had only taken his money in his house because he was more powerful, prosperous, and not a count. Max watched the stars all night promising himself. He would remain honest and generous no matter how powerful and wealthy he was getting. Eventually, as the days passed, he got used to spending the night outside on the bench. The cold too failed to bother him in the quest. He would survive off of anything he could find to eat, and his job at the bakery still paid him. But he promised himself not to live on rent anymore. He would save that money and fulfill his dream every day and every weather. No matter how harsh or deadly he would spend the nights of winter rains and hungry stomach outside. Mr. Walker had taken everything from him, but he failed to take away his determination, saving all that he had. He decided not to wait any longer. The poor boy started selling bread on a stall. He would bake in the bakery oven. He would invest whatever he had in the business instead of waiting for the savings to get bigger, meaning people of all kinds of greed, cruelty, and harshness. Sometimes kids would bully him and tear his stall away. He would change neighborhoods selecting which one to stay in about how badly the people would treat a homeless man year after year. His little business grew by a few inches. Sometimes he would bake more and get a good sale. Sometimes the loss was written in his. For the first few years, getting his baked things to sell was the biggest challenge. 
Nobody was familiar with the taste of his stalls, and people avoided eating street food for hygiene. But he kept trying to get a good sale, saving anything extra he would make of his profit to open the bakery of his dreams. Ten years later, the well-dressed man got out of his car with the journalist and cameraman following him at every foot. The cameras flashed as the journalist followed him for the documentary they were making on him. He looked at the bench under the tree. It was broad daylight, but memories of a cold night swept across his mind, oh my god, was this the exact bench? The journalist quickly instructed his cameraman to take a shot of it. The journalist belonged to a business magazine. He covered great business people who started from significantly less and reached their dreams at. Yes, the wealthy businessman replied, being the owner of Canada's biggest bakery franchise today. What do you think when you see this bench? Sir? The journalist questioned a question too heavy for the man to answer. It was the bench he had spent his homeless nights on that gave him refuge from the burden of anyone's favor. That I'm proud of myself for not giving up proud of myself for not turning greedy and cruel like the people that brought me down now that I am in their place of being rich and wealthy. Is there any advice you would like to give the young generation watching this? I had nothing. Max was just another street boy today. I'm the tycoon Max Stewart because the street boy chose never to give. I've worked day and night, restlessly, eating nothing, sleeping much less, and saving up for my dreams. I started with a stall of bread, and now I own the most number of bakeries in the country. He went on, be grateful for what you have, but never fail to strive for more is what I've learned and what I'd love to teach. He smiled, looking behind him at the door of Mr. Shelby's house. It was rusty and abandoned. He was happy that door was slammed on him that day. It taught him much more than success and his savings could have ever taught him.